actually hearing the vibration of the sun. My name is Alex Young and I am the Associate Director for Science in the Heliophysics Science Division here at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. The dynamic imagery and sounds of the sun are on display at the NASA Goddard Visitor Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. The sun is vibrating at lots of different frequencies, ronal mass ejections, this whole thing we call space weather. So all of these things are connected and that simple sound is giving us a probe. A collaboration between the European Space Agency and NASA. They say that Om is the sound of not just bliss, but universal vibration. Now what does a universal vibration mean? A universal vibration means something that vibrates in every part, each part of our body, in each and every cell of our body. It is omnipresent, present everywhere. And it is not just present in each and every cell of our body, but in this entire universe, in this entire creation, in every nook and corner, even in the flow of Maganda. Om is present, the vibration is present. A lot of researchers are trying to get to it, but for a human being, it is not possible without nectar, without grace, without the ultimate expressing itself, which leads to the reverberation that we call Om. That which cannot be chanted, the ultimate mantra, the ajap or the ajapa, That which happens by itself, within you, as well as that which pervades this entire cosmos and creation. That which is the all-pervading one. That which is a holy trinity in itself. But when it happens within you, it is like nectar, like elixir. It is like the drop of nectar or a rainfall of nectar. That which is beyond thoughts, words, chants, 
and even rituals. When nectar drops, it releases or is expressed as arm or something like that. From the wordless to the word is happening here. When the nectar expresses itself through Brahma Vakya, it is the first word. Sitting here on the banks of this beautiful Marganga in the lap of the Himalayas, where the founders of the Vedas, the Ved and the Vedantic philosophy, the mystics who meditated here in these caves, found themselves became blossomed selves. Each time we come here in the lap of the Himalaya, far away from the regular city life, we are reminded of what our ancestors, the mystics of the past, the sages, the seers have given us. Those who realized what they have given us. This knowledge of yoga, this philosophy of yoga, so this knowledge of yoga, these practices of yoga, these so amazing tools and techniques of yoga, as we all know. So when we come to places like these, we are reminded of the teachings of the sages who lived and meditated here. went through this journey of yoga from dharana to dhyana and dhyana to samadhi and then they were able to realize truth they had experiences and those experiences led to more experiences Experiences were followed by realization and that realization became the wisdom that they share with us. So each time we come here, this energy here at the caves reminds us of the gifts that we have been blessed with. We are reminded of the huge potential of the huge treasure trough that we are, that resides within each one of us. We just need to go deep within, fetch the nectar, explore. We just need to go deep within and master our mind. Once we have transcended the boundaries of the attachments, of the chaos within, of the desires and the fears of materialism, once we have transcended that and transcended more, we start coming closer to the treasure trove. And one day comes when we finally become that treasure itself. And when we become that treasure, when we are able to find that union with that treasure to become ourselves, then we are able to experience that state of ecstasy that we all have been longing for. Oh. Om is like the reverberation of the drop of nectar. This drop is not fluid or matter, but very subtle. Every great mantra begins with Om only. The journey and experience and its completion and its effect in totality upon you, which begins from the so-called third eye and the crown sastra. that has been referred to in yoga scriptures. It is also known as the seed of all mantras, Beach Mantra. Om is a Beach Mantra. Om in its original form is responsible for creation, sustenance and dissolution. Om is not just symbolic like some people say. It is a tremendous experience in its pure form. Oh 
whom is the seeder creator of all seven sounds or surs in Hindustani Shastri Sangeet or music that are Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha and Ni. Om is a state of immersion, a state of union, a state of oneness, a state of void, a state of yoga. Om is a state of complete silence, stillness. Here there is no need or no scope of thought or prayer. Om is a real, pure experience. To be honest. Whoever has truly experienced all, the greatest proof is that the person will never have any doubt, any suspicion, any judgment of the experience. There is no scope of doubt or suspicion. If you are drenched in all, there are no two paths, only one path, no doubt. You don't need any faith. Om is an expression of truth. And that truth cannot be changed, twisted or tweaked. Those who think they can manipulate, fox, rule, fool, mislead or misguide, twist, tweak, reform, are ignorant. We all have been chasing. Chasing success, chasing wealth, chasing health, chasing relationships, chasing a lot of things. The chase just never seems to end. It is a never-ending chase. It is a chase of materialism. It is a loop that doesn't end. It is a web. You will never be able to come out of it, through it. It's a very strong attachment. To get out of that, so that we can come closer to the bliss and the ananda, and even beyond that we are, the truth that we are, that we can become, that we have always wanted deep within the core of our heart, that the mystics have always inspired and motivated us to become, that the energy in these mountains, caves and rivers is motivating us right now to become. That, that practice has to be taken, that has to be done. My dear friends, this material world is temporal. Your material form is temporal. Your family is temporal. Your success or failure is temporal. Your joy or misery is temporary. Your desires, thoughts and goals are temporary. Your lust, anger, greed, jealousy, attachment, inflated ego, everything is temporary. This planet is temporary. Your human form is temporary. This solar system, galaxy, constellation, universe, multiverse, everything is temporary. Your human intelligence is also temporary. Your existence in current form, that to which you are maximum attached, is also temporary. If you give millions of dollars to your child in succession before dying, you gave something temporary. But if you shared knowledge and truth with your child, you gave him a lot more. This knowledge is priceless. The rest is all temporary. Shesh sab maya And in the end, does not fulfill you. Om is in the science of creation as well as in the science of death. In all, there is no worry. Death is just solution. But in truth, there is no beginning and no end. 
you are not separate from that truth in a state of union, emotion or yoga. Om is like the breath of God. Om is also like your highest prana, a secret higher level of energy. It has been spoken about as the word from which grows the world. He who tries to drink this nectar will find love. So there must be love from the word go. And we must walk on this path without any greed and expectations. Be free of any such burden. We all are nature in a way. Our body is nature. The mountains, the rivers, this human body, it's all made of five elements. Panch Tattva, at least the physical part, the Panch Tattva like we say in yoga. And then there are five sheets, the physical, the pran, the mind, the intellect and the anamayakush. Lord Shankar, Bhagwan Shankar, preached to Ma, Devi Ma, that this body and the universe is the same. This body, Shari, and the Srishti, the creation, is the same, in the sense that all of this creation is made from five elements. And they are rising from the Swara. So he says that out of the space, First the space is born, the Akasha, then from Akasha comes the Marutra and from that came Agni, fire and out of that came the Jala, water and from that rose or rises the Prithvi, the earth. When these five elements come together, then they form this nature that we are seeing on or this body that we are experiencing right that we claim ourselves to be the master of. But there is also the power of consciousness. And that power that source is the real driving force behind this element, this creation, this entire process. And we all are connected. We are connected to each other through the consciousness. And ultimately it is the source. Everything dissolves in the soul. The truth is the source. The ultimate truth is the source. We are all a family. That's why the same. So once the transcension happens, a lot of things happen. The source is the ultimate truth. And if we get there, then we attain a state of oneness, a state of yoga, permanent state, a very pure state an inexplicably beautiful state. But the first goal, common goal amongst humans today must be to transcend your mind first. We are continuously thinking about our own problems that are there in our life. So we are surrounded by problems. There is no doubt about that. Everyone is seeking a solution to their problems. Yoga which brings us to truth, wisdom, bliss, tranquility is the ultimate solution. Yoga takes us to that place where all problems dissolve because it takes you to your root. It takes you to your source. 
It takes you to the fountain of bliss. It takes you to you. You have been the problem. You think you are surrounded by problems and you are looking for the solutions. You know what? You are the solution. So you need to find yourself. You need to blossom and become yourself. That's all that you need to do. And that is possible through yogic practices. And there are so many vidyas in it, such as mantra vidya, yantra vidya, mudra vidya, bhava, and many more tools that can take out all the clutter that is there inside you so that you can begin to think more sensibly, act more wisely, become more sharp, intelligent, calm. That is just the first step. The ultimate goal, of course, is to be to immerse in the source, to attain union with the source, and become the divinity that you are. The nectar of Om completely transforms you, as if you just washed yourself in the inner Ganga or the great Sindhu Sagar whatever you want to call it. To be honest, it is like taking a bath in the ocean of nectar. Om gives birth to true love, compassion, immersion, oneness, surrender, true prayer. But then prayers are only in the beginning. When you realize the truth, you don't pray, but you definitely bow down with love and emotion. And you share with the one seeking through prayer that everything is temporary. If you want to ask, ask for the truth, ask for the process that will lead to the truth and start doing it.